What's up YouTube and welcome back for part 6 of my single overhead cam EJ257 hybrid build. In this episode I'm going to concentrate on the heads. I do want to continue on where I, from where I left off and clean up all the valves. Uh, I'm kind of making the decision to actually install the valve seals that I have. I don't really see why they're not going to work. And uh, I'm just pretty confident. It's a package of 16. Why would they provide 16 seals? for an engine that has 16 valves. It must be for all of the valves. <laughs> so now that I have the bench grinder, I can actually take all the valves, hit them with the wire brush, and really clean them up really nice. Um, Cause I do plan on lapping them back into place. But before I do that, I'm actually looking at the head and the ports, and I'm thinking of busting out my uh, aluminum carbide to maybe clean these up a little bit. So I'm, I probably won't actually do any major porting, uh, but there's some little spots and uh, just casting marks that I'd like to take off and just possibly smooth out the ports a little bit and uh, maybe open them just a little bit. I'm going to start cleaning up some surfaces, get rid of some of this gunk that's on the head. Uh, probably clean the, the deck surface and start cleaning up all the valves and then we'll get into the actual reconditioning. Okay, so it's a couple days later, and I've come to the decision I'm going to do a little bit of boarding. And because I looked at the intake manifold, it's definitely gasket matched. So I've got I've got a new gasket here, and just to give you an idea, I'll place a new gasket onto the head, and you can see how much material is left behind. So if the intake manifold's already been ported to the gasket the airflow, the air fuel mixture is actually going to hit this little bridge of metal and cause a little turbulence bef before going into the ports. So uh, I, it's something I did on my on the 2.2 heads that I have. Uh, that that engine flowed very well. This bit probably cost me about a hundred dollars 
it's an aluminum uh, carbide and it will take metal off a lot of metal off if you use it improperly but if you use it lightly it just takes shavings of metal and with this long reach I can get right down inside and at least take off these rough edges maybe uh, give this bridge a little knife edge and then probably port the edges out to the gasket and then just give a little bit of extra flow in a couple little areas maybe just really to clean it up I, I'm not gonna actually do much porting to them at, at, at all except for uh, just right at the inlet here the majority of it it's gonna take me some time there's gonna be metal flying everywhere I'm gonna have to clean them up afterwards so I really don't know how many homemade port job videos there are on YouTube but this is gonna be one of them and uh, you know I don't plan on taking a whole lot off uh, I don't want to disturb this the the ports too much uh, you know it's really not it's not going to be like CNC ported one to the, one port to the other they're going to be exactly the same right so you don't the deeper you go the the more issues you can cause so it, it's best just to do some very light porting and I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time on them and porting can take quite a bit of time uh, you you do want to take your take care while you're doing it and uh, you definitely don't want to be getting too close with the tool up to a guide or a valve seat so it needs to be uh, it needs to be done with some type of precision so yeah that's where I'm going next I'm gonna flick on the compressor and get it filled uh, take a marker and start outlining where where this uh, port should be open to and then uh, get ready to take some metal off I ain't got no money for living I ain't forgiving of what you've done I ain't got no reason for thinking I'm just doing what I've always done I'm gonna shoot you Until you're resting in the doorway Gonna knock you out I'm gonna shoot you Until you're resting in the doorway Gonna knock you out Boy, gonna knock you out
So I've got the first intake port pretty much what I call finished. I uh, can't, can't get all this fine stuff out, uh, but I mean I can run my fingernail across most of it and my fingernail just glides. So it's, a, it's actually really smooth. I've just left it there's just a little bit of a line around the port from the marker so that when the gasket is actually compressed into place you got that extra little bit of room there and I I kind of always do it that way even the uh, intake manifold would be done that way so it's kind of hard to see on camera but that's how much material we've actually taken off and of course smoothened out a lot more inside taking out the casting marks but that's how much material you can actually go through and uh, it takes a lot of cleaning to get this stuff make sure it's all out of there there's a lot of aluminum filings and dust now so the plan next is to I'll do this side off camera uh, I think I've got enough footage of actually doing the one and I guess there's gonna be quite a few time lapses in this video because uh, I've got a lot of work to get done and I'm not so sure I'm actually going to get the heads torqued on in this video now, but uh, I'll certainly try and get them both prepped to the point that they're ready to go on. So I'll do this side off camera and then we get to the point where I'll have to clean it all up and get ready to start lapping some valves. So I've obviously forgotten how long that actually takes and uh, it takes a long time. Definitely uh, quite a few hours just to do one head. Uh, but I've got the other port done, it's all polished up, and uh, I'm ready to move on to the valve seals and get the valve seals installed. I've cleaned up my whole area, I've cleaned up the head really good, um, so now the valve seals can go in. No chances of uh, aluminum shavings being in the new seals. And then go about uh, lapping the valves in and getting them installed. So, uh, probably going to move on to another time lapse. There's the one head finished. Got to port it out to the gasket. Got all the valves lapped, new valve seals. All the surfaces are cleaned up. Everything's torqued back on so the rocker shafts are torqued back into place. And the pulley's back on. It's ready to torque onto the block. But because I've got the other head to do, and that's going to take me quite a while, uh, plan for me to install the heads onto the block in the next episode. Um, 
it took me a little bit longer than I kind of remembered it would. And uh, I'm just glad that I did go ahead and do it. The EJ251 heads, the single overhead cam heads, are, are known for really good flowing. Um, people have compared them to the STI heads. And uh, I, I know port matching them to the gasket, the same as the manifold. There won't be that lip that the air, the air fuel mixture will hit. And uh, everything will just flow a lot better. And uh, I know it's a significant upgrade when you're doing that type of thing on, a, on a, just a regular NA boxer engine. can really uh, get that extra power up top. But yeah, the finish on the intake ports. Uh, I mean, there looks to be scars, but it's just very light scratching. I mean... Uh, it's the best I could get without spending a whole lot more time and uh, it's definitely even out to the gasket they're very evenly shaped and I got real no worries because the more boost you put the less it'll matter and of course the bottom everything all cleaned up the valves look really good combustion chambers as clean as I could get them and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the results actually now getting heads ported can cost a small fortune and uh, if this is something that you wanted to try on your own what I can best recommend is you go to the scrapyard try and go on one of their cheap days where you can just pull and grab something and uh, find an easy to remove head something that's easy to disassemble and just start porting it it's something you're probably not going to use but it'd be good practice and give you a feel for working with the aluminum and how f quickly it can come off uh, the steel carbide bits don't even bother because they just they'll get full of aluminum the aluminum will bind to the bit and you'll be constantly cleaning the bit off, bit off trying to actually work with it where that long shafted bit that I showed you earlier it just it, it you just go through with it slow it, the, the footage might be seem like I'm actually using it quite fast but it, you use this, the tool at a moderate rpm and it just starts taking metal off um, the longer you hold it there the more it chews out so uh, chews a little bit at a time so you just kind of work it along nice and slow and uh, you can make it do exactly what you want it to do so by the time you're watching this i'll have already finished the other head and both of them will be ready to go back onto the block and hopefully i can start that video for thursday and uh, I've got to move on to some other things like the intake manifold and the turbo start getting that stuff cleaned up so that I can get it all back together and get ready to put it back in the car because um, I've got lots to do and I need to get stuff done gonna try and spend a little bit of time under the hood and clean it up a little bit before putting the engine back in doesn't make sense to do all this cleaning and painting to the motor and put it under a scuzzy engine bay so but yeah, I've got lots of stuff to get done, and hopefully I can get this back together as soon as possible so I can get working on some other stuff. I've got so much to do. Uh, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below, and I'll see you in the next one.